Hello, everyone. I am Chao Chuan. Let's talk about Iman the Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is a famed dinosaur that we are pretty familiar with. This dinosaur has always been legendary in its appearance and research. Its life image has been changing since it was discovered until today. There has also been a lot of discussion about it. Spinosaurus was found at the beginning of the last century. At that time, scientists unearthed this fantastic and huge animal in Africa and transported it to Germany. Unfortunately, many of its specimens were destroyed during World War II. The first fossil materials of Spinosaurus that we can see now are only some photos and sketches. Therefore, the public only had a vague understanding of this animal for a long time. Many books I read as a child briefly mentioned that a dinosaur called Spinosaurus was larger than Tyrannosaurus rex and had a peculiar appearance. Still, its living habits and appearance were described ambiguously in the books. The restorations illustrated by different people then were also diverse. The only feature in common was the sail-like structure on its back. Until modern times, Jurassic Park 3, based on the latest scientific perception, portrayed Spinosaurus as a close relative of Baryonyx, fiercer than Tyrannosaurus rex, which is deeply rooted in the public's hearts. But the appearance of Spinosaurus as the god of war was soon broken. Ten years ago, people discovered a complete Spinosaurus fossil in Africa, which made us realize that this dinosaur looked quite different from what we had imagined. Based on relatively new specimens, we know that Spinosaurus' head did look like that of Baryonyx, but its head appeared thicker than the latter. It had a somewhat flexible neck. Judging from the shape of its teeth and mouth and the shape of its neck, it may be an animal that was good at preying on fish. This should be similar to most Spinosaurid dinosaurs. Unfortunately, its four limbs have not been collected. Currently, we can only model its four limbs based on dinosaurs such as Baryonyx. In addition, new fossils show that its most peculiar part is the hind limbs. The legs of Spinosaurus were very short and inconsistent with the body, giving it a weird and uncoordinated look. When its legs are walking, you can see its lower legs seem shorter than its head in the restoration. Besides, we didn't know until a few years ago that Spinosaurus had a unique tail. Intuitively, its tail looked very much like the tail of a catfish or a salamander. Its tail was quite tall with a fin-like shape, a bit like a crocodile's, which convinced people that this animal was good at swimming. Let's start by looking at this animal as a whole. When we reconstructed the Spinosaurus this time, we made reference to the latest restored morphology. Recently, scientists have used CT, scanning technology to reassemble the known specimens of Spinosaurus in the computer and conduct more detailed research. As a result, the body of Spinosaurus now looks more concise and shortened than speculated in previous years. Its sails were more compact. There was a saddle-shaped structure in the early restoration. In the new restoration, this structure disappeared and became almost trapezoidal, with the upper part flatter than the original. After being reconstructed, the posterior of its sail, the ones above the sacral vertebrae, were found to combine very tightly to form a bony plate. This shows that the back half of the sail was wholly made of a bony plate structure, and only the front half was soft, and could move left and right. Now, let's look at it part by part. The head of Spinosaurus was shaped like a crane and looked slenderer when viewed from above. Its head was elongated, especially the mouth. A notch existed at the front of the mouth, resembling a crocodile. When its mouth closed, the front teeth would bite each other backward, forming a more robust plier-like structure. The nostrils of Spinosaurus were unique, compared with other carnivorous dinosaurs. Most carnivorous dinosaurs had their nostrils located at the premaxilla, but the nostrils of Spinosaurus were very far back and have been up to this position. Its eyes were also positioned very high, showing that Spinosaurus adapted to the water. When it dived, it only needed to poke its head slightly out of the water to observe the surroundings. There was a crest in front of the eyes of Spinosaurus, 
The specific shape of this crest can only be speculated at present, but based on some relatively intact specimens, we can imagine that its crest was probably somewhat elongated, a bit like Dilophosaurus or Guanlong. The front end of Spinosaurus' lower jaw was relatively thin, but the rear end had a strong structure that could attach muscles, indicating that this dinosaur may have a relatively powerful bite force. Newer research believes that, when it opened its mouth, its lower jaw would tilt slightly to both sides, indicating that this animal might swallow some larger animals, such as fish. The prey can be as large as its head, or beyond this range. Its neck was very slender and flexible, indicating that this animal might usually walk on the shore or in the water, raise its head like a crane, and extend its head into the water to snatch prey. It may adopt such actions. The long neck also made standing higher and observing its surrounding environment easier. Even when submarined, this long neck can be very flexible in the water to hunt prey. If you observe the Spinosaurus from above, you will find its body is pretty broad and cylindrical. This is also an essential feature of it. It was a very stout animal. Its four limbs were huge. Even though its hand fossils are incomplete, we can still know that it had very large forelimbs and claws. Its claws can be learned from the fossils. It had very huge front claws and a relatively small third claw. However, the specific length of these fingers is unknown, so we combined many theories to shape it like this, making its thumb shorter and its other two fingers almost the same length. Its hind limbs were very short. Early research believed that Spinosaurus had long forelimbs and short hind limbs and might be a quadrupedal animal. This statement has been around for a long time. In the 1970s and 1980s, some restorations already adopted this statement. But they didn't know it had huge claws on its forelimbs. At that time, it was believed that Spinosaurus, like most carnivorous dinosaurs, could not turn its hands outwards so it could not walk like ordinary animals. Instead, it adopted a method like that of a gorilla or a sloth, with its claws hooked backward. It may use the backs of its fingers to walk, resembling a giant ground sloth. But we later carefully studied the structure of Spinosaurus forelimbs and found it seemed that they could not bear weight. It may occasionally use its forelimbs to support the ground when standing and resting, just as the footprints of Dilophosaurus show. When squatting, its two forelimbs would rest on the ground. But when walking normally, the forelimbs may not be used. Although its hind limbs were short, they were not so short to lose the ability to move. They looked relatively thin, but they could still bear the weight of its body. Moreover, Spinosaurus was not the only dinosaur whose hind limbs appeared to be short. Even Giganotosaurus hind limbs were not as long as expected in proportion to its body and were also relatively small. The legs of many Carcharodontosaurids also appeared somewhat shorter, and even the legs of many Abelosaurids also seemed shorter. The legs of Spinosaurus were peculiar, being fairly flat, indicating that this dinosaur might swim with its feet. Its feet were somewhat like a duck structure. In the early days, it was believed that Spinosaurus walked with all its soles on the ground and was an upright animal. But later, some suspected Spinosaurus footprints were discovered. The footprints showed that only its toes touched the ground, similar to most carnivorous dinosaurs. Let's take a look at the very eye-catching sail on its back. Many people are guessing what the function of this sail is. In the early days, it was thought that this sail might play a role in dissipating heat. Later, it was found to be a semi-aquatic animal, and this sail was believed to play a role in swimming. But now we generally think this sail structure may not benefit swimming. It cannot swim as fast as a shark or sailfish, so this sail cannot play such a role. A more reliable theory is that the sail, and the sail-like structure atop the tail may be just used for decoration, like some animals in the modern agamid lizard family. Many lizards today, such as the flying lizard, will grow such sails in this region, and the Philippine sailfin lizard also has a huge sail on its tail. These sails generally appear in brighter colors, and some, 
albeit not much different from the body color, can still serve as a display. Therefore, the display function of such a structure is more important. The color of the male's sail may be brighter than that of the female. Although the Spinosaurus tail had a fin-like structure, which seemed more capable of swimming, there is a lot of controversy. This tail looked like a crocodile's and could swing from side to side. However, the bones of the tail were tilted backward, which made it unable to swing from side to side nimbly. If its tail swung from side to side, the skin connecting the two bones would pull against each other, resulting in the tail not swinging in a wide range. Therefore, most people think that its swimming ability may be pretty limited, and it might only walk around in the water like a wading bird, or soak in the water like a hippopotamus. It would not chase around in the water like a large fish. If it entered deep water, it would submerge this sail into the water, and poke its head out of the water a bit like this. Because its legs were very short, it may adopt a higher posture when standing in the water with its head looking in all directions. To avoid exposing its sail, its sail may be buried under the water all year round. When it walked around on the water, under the sunlight, this sail might form a shadow below the body to attract fish. It may also play such a role. Good. The above concludes our introduction of I'm in the Spinosaurus. Thank you all.